Leopard geckos might just be the most popular pet lizard in the whole world. But it seems that as reptile keepers, we may have had the wrong idea about how to keep these guys in captivity. For starters, this is not strictly a ground dwelling desert animal. And I know what you're thinking, but stick around, I can defend that statement. This week, we customized a couple awesome leopard gecko enclosures with some of their true uh, natural behaviors in mind. I'm Raf the human. This is Master Roshi, one of our leopard geckos. And this is actually the animal that started all of this here at Red Ribbon Reptiles. Speaking of that, you're watching Red Ribbon Reptiles, and we're so glad that you are. But so let's get into today's video. are the animals that started it all off here. And for quite a while now, they've been living in 32 quart Sterilite tubs, which look, Sterilite tubs are great uh, in a pinch for some species. Based on some of the info in today's video might not be the best for leopard geckos. And again, since they've been around the longest, we're in the enclosure upgrade phase. And uh, it seemed only fair that these guys got to go first, being that they've been sticking around the longest and they've been in tubs for a while. These simple type setups, they met their bare minimum requirements, but probably were not fulfilling a whole lot of enrichment, a whole lot of naturalistic behaviors. So obviously it was about damn time, no Lizzo just lizard for a change. And to make that change, well, it all starts with a box, right? And for our boxes that we chose for these builds, we went with reptile habitats from dubia.com. Now we use dubia.com for a whole lot of food that these guys have been eating, but we saw that they were also selling enclosures now and they had good reviews and such a low price compared to some of the prices that you'll pay for reptile enclosures made by other companies. So we figured why not try them out? We went with their 33 gallon option and this is, uh, it's almost like a 40 gallon breeder. It's 36 inches wide, 18 inches deep, but only 12 inches high instead of 18 inches high like you'll see in a 40 gallon breeder. But again, these are pretty small animals and bigger is always better for enclosures, but we figured 33 gallons of space is a lot better than 32 quarts of space and these guys could enjoy. Go ahead and leave a comment if you want to see a more detailed like build of the actual enclosure from dubia.com themselves because we are going to have more coming in. We're going to be doing a lot more upgrades and uh, we're sold on these enclosures. So just to put it briefly for now, these are very high quality enclosures, uh, incredibly lightweight, absolutely ridiculous, easy to put together. And again, the, you can't beat the price on mainstream reptile enclosures. With that said, on to the customization process. First, we used some two inch thick insulation foam board to kind of map out where we wanted these natural like rock ledges in their enclosures. And then it was time to spray foam the rocks in place on the background. So we laid the enclosure on its side, hit it with a bunch of spray foam, placed the rock ledges where we wanted them. And we even added a little chunk of cork to incorporate in the background for each of these animals. And once that spray foam was all in place, we took the enclosure outside because if you're going to do this step, make sure you're in a very well ventilated area. You don't want to be breathing this stuff in. We took a hot knife to carve kind of a more natural, you know, because rocks are not perfectly flat or round or square. So we kind of carved that up with a hot knife to create a more natural look on these rock ledges. We went ahead and painted it with dry lock, which is a tintable masonry waterproofer. People paint like foundations with that and the inside of basements. And it just creates another layer between this weird foam and the animal, but also helps like not to let water into that foam and eventually deteriorate it slowly over time. In the future, we are going to use pond and stone spray foam, which comes out black. So we're not going to have to worry about missing spots really with the paint. We'll just give it a good coat and it'll be ready to go, right, Roshi? And after that, we had some pre-mixed charcoal gray grout. And we used that to cover all those rock ledges to make them not only look more like rocks, but also feel more like rocks for these little guys that are going to be using them all the time. And now with the background getting pretty close to done, it just needed that last finishing touch to make this look like a little leopard gecko cave in their natural habitat. We painted Gorilla Glue onto that spray foam, basically all around the background, minus the rock ledges. And we dumped a liberal amount of coconut core on there. And once that glue was starting to dry and we knew it was bonding and holding some of that coconut core in place, 
flip it over and boom, you got some nice dirty little walls. And I wanna mention this part because I did post a short of Roshi at the top of his new enclosure and he was right next to some LED lights. We did mount LED lights in here. We received an angry comment talking about how it's ir irresponsible to have this exposed electricity and wiring uh, close enough to be in contact with the geckos. I totally get it, right? It kind of looks bad. There is a clear like waterproofed, it's almost like a silicone all over the whole LED light strip. And then because I am cautious about leaving exposed electric, I'm not only cautious about it, I don't leave exposed electrical stuff in my animal enclosures. I even taped off the end that was cut so there is no actual electric current able to access my lizard. And to demonstrate this, I will now lick the LED lights. Okay guys, I did really wanna go above and beyond and literally lick the LED light strip for you, but uh, I am on a, hey, you can't eat my fingers, but I am unable to reach my head in there and creep my tongue up there. So here we go, ready? Water bowl, that's real water, that's wet. Straight up, no cuts, no nothing. Look, look at this. It is a clear coat around this. Okay, you can't, I mean, you can't really see it either, but this is completely coated. If you haven't exposed the LED light strip, don't just put it in like that. Cover it up somehow, I guess, or just get a good one that is covered up like that, so. Time to add some substrate. Nothing too crazy here. We used coconut core for the base of the substrate. Then the next most used ingredient was probably play sand. Probably had more play sand than the other two ingredients in there. Added some peat moss to kind of spread it out. It's not the best substrate. It does dry out kind of quick, but mixed in with some other good things, totally fine. And then of course some cypress mulch too to add again like natural like bark textures in the ground. Right, it's not just plain old dirt but also again, to spread it out, right? To be able to use a more substrate in there, give them a nice deep layer to dig in. Roshi loves to dig. And I really like how the look came out. And next up, some hardscaping. We had a variation of fake plants for each enclosure to just give them more things to hide behind and look at and feel, smell, things like that. Some cork bark, of course. I love the way that stuff looks. Again, super lightweight, doesn't mold, stays good forever. Spider wood, which is turning into one of my favorite reptile <laughs> decorations. I don't know, I just love how the spider wood looks. And these are small geckos, right? So even some of those thinner branches will be able to support them and just give it a real awesome look in the enclosure. And we did give them two of their old hides each to make them feel kind of more at home. They have their own smells on it. So uh, this whole thing wasn't a complete change of scenery. So then it was time for these boys to have a little look around their new home.
talk about the ideas behind these enclosures, but to do that, and I'm happy to do so, I have to shout out Herp HQ for this awesome video that he made on, well, leopard geckos in the wild. And the video is called Leopard Geckos Don't Live in Deserts. Now, please finish watching this video first, but then make sure you head over there and watch the whole video because uh, I'm not just gonna repeat his content. I am gonna highlight something quick here in a brief summary so you guys can know what I mean, but definitely check it out. If you like herpetoculture in general, this video kind of, kind of, probes at our minds and say like maybe we don't know everything that we think we know and oh boy do i love a perspective change every now and again so the brief summary of that video uh there are leopard gecko species that range all through india into the middle east and all and into really dry rocky areas and things like that but it turns out the locality that best matches our captive leopard geckos here at least in the united states is the locality discussed in this video found in Nepal. And these geckos that were found in Nepal were not found in a desert or a rocky area. They were found in kind of like a lush forest. And not only a forest, a forest that gets almost down to freezing temperatures during certain parts of the year. This doesn't sound like a desert. And not only were they not in a desert and they're in this forest, some of these leopard geckos were found about five feet up in a tree. Wait, I thought I thought you can't climb. I thought you're gonna hurt yourself if you climb, buddy. I don't want you to hurt yourself. So with this in mind, it seems our idea of leopard gecko habitats having to be super dry areas and us as keepers being careful to limit their climbing opportunities because they're going to fall and get hurt. Guys, look at, the, look at the feet on this thing. This thing climbs, look at it. Like, why would you have fingers like that if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna climb things? It almost looks like the back foot of a bearded dragon, okay? Like, structure-wise, the length of the toes and things like that. I know this is not a bearded dragon, and I'm not saying that they're arboreal, but... Guys, they can climb things, man. They're okay. They're animals. So why not provide our leopard geckos with a nice little cutout of a cool little forest cave incorporating some awesome climbing opportunities and natural textures to help promote natural behaviors in our animals at home, which is probably what we should be doing. And that's exactly what we did. And uh, I mean, Roshi doesn't speak English, but I think he's happy, right? Now, let me be clear, by no means am I saying that leopard geckos are arboreal or you should keep them in arboreal style setups. As you can see, these are terrestrial based setups. But as you can see, even with only one foot of height, we were able to add some reasonable climbing opportunities for our little friends and add some uh, extra floor space really to your enclosure. When you have climbing ledges and things like that, it just kind of adds space. We're already even seeing more uh, adventure, more exploration, more activity from these little guys and it's only been a few days. In fact, let's take a look at how their first meal and their new home. turned out and it really fills the heart with joy to see the two animals that started all off into a nice and naturalistic enclosure as i said bigger is always better we could have gone a little bit bigger 
but it's at least four times the size of their old enclosure which is what people call the bare minimum for leopard geckos. So, and not only are we really happy about it, I think these guys are too. Hey, if you are at home, why don't you let us know in the comments? What do you guys think? How'd they turn out? And as I said, if you like enclosure upgrade videos, stick around because we're going to be doing a lot more of these. With all that being said, I'm going to let Master Roshi get back to bed. I'm a rapper. But he does want to say thank you guys all for watching Red Ribbon Reptiles. Make sure you like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to our channel if you like reptile content on YouTube. And that'll do it. I'm Raph the Human. This is Master Roshi the Leopard Gecko. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.